An academic medical center is like a small city. There are hundreds of constituencies. Uh, you can't just think about doctors, for example, because there are multiple specialties of doctors. And each one, each specialty has its own sociology. If you get to know dermatologists versus pathologists versus anesthesiologists. Uh, likewise, nurses. You tend to think of nurses as all nurses. Well, the nurses who work in the neonatal intensive care unit are very different from the nurses who work in an ambulatory clinic. But what's common to all of the people who work in a hospital is, is an underlying value system. It's a, a group of people who have devoted themselves to alleviating human suffering, um, who are passionate about it, who are very caring. And I always found that if you, if you frame the issues of the day in terms of those underlying values, so that the options that were being considered could be evaluated against the thing that people really cared about, um, then you could have a pretty good chance of creating a sense of teamwork and spirit for the direction of the organization. I started a blog because um, I was curious about doing it. Um, I had read an article in the New York Times that very few of the Fortune 500 CEOs had blogs. And I said, gee, I have an interesting job involved with medicine and healthcare that everybody cares about. <clears throat> Maybe as I learn stuff about running a hospital, I'll print it and I'll see if anyone wants to read it. Um, you have to be a little narcissistic to write a blog because you have to believe that someone's going to want to read it. Um, but I had no idea how, um, how much it, was, it would spread. I had no idea um, how popular it would get. So now it gets thousands of readers per day from all over the world. And I think that's because I was able to write it in my voice. People knew it was for me personally. It wasn't the PR department or the legal department writing it. And I think the topics about which I write are of direct personal interest to people. Um, because everybody knows someone who's gotten sick or gone to the hospital and, and they care about it. So I've been really pleased having it. It's also created friendships all over the world because there are other bloggers and people on Twitter and Facebook and so on who are in touch. And there's a real community of interest among the healthcare bloggers. Upon leaving the hospital, I had to change the name. It's no longer running a hospital. It's now not running a hospital. And um, uh, I tend to write <clears throat> Excuse me. I tend to write less about what's going on in the hospital because I'm not there anymore, so I don't see it. Also, at the time, part of my audience was the staff in the hospital. Thousands of them would read it every day. And um, uh, although now they're part of the audience, they're part of a general audience of just people from everywhere. So I've been changing the topics slightly, being more general, more national, more international in focus than my particular hospital. And I have to admit that the postings have been getting a little longer, too, because I have more time to write now. There are three successes that I would feel particularly good about. One is helping to save a really good hospital that was going to go under and go out of business. Um, two was the work we did on improving quality and safety and other processes in the hospital. And three was when the group of employees all came together and made personal sacrifices in terms of salaries and benefits to help avoid um, um, uh, layoffs. And that was a real indication of a real sense of community. I think the, the skills of leadership pretty much stay the same, which is how do you motivate the people in the organization to work well together as a team and to feel some sense of inspiration about the underlying mission of the place? I don't think those change at all. Circumstances always change, and so one other um, common feature of leadership is to be adaptable to change circumstances. But there's no way you can prepare specifically for what might come next. It will just come. And so you have to be both strategic and opportunistic. I, 
I think leadership skills uh, between the public and private sector and the nonprofit sector are pretty much the same. The, the goals against which you're being measured vary, however. If, you, if you're running a corporation, a for-profit corporation, you have a duty of obligation to the shareholders to make as much money as you can. That's very simple, very straightforward. If you're running a nonprofit like a hospital, your mission is a little more complicated. It's, it's excellent clinical care, it's excellent research, it's excellent teaching. There are community responsibilities as well. And then in the government, of course, if you're running an agency, your board of directors is the legislature. Um, and they pass your enabling statute and you have to comply with that statute. But you also have the courts overseeing you, you also have public interest groups and, and the like. And um, again, you, you don't have a particular metric that you can turn back to like the profitability of a corporation. So you have to be, both in the nonprofit sector and the government sector, you have to be a bit more comfortable with ambiguity in terms of how your work will be judged. Healthcare is too complicated an issue for the national leaders to present a cogent, thoughtful view of what's needed. It's a sixth of the economy, involves tens of millions of people in the provision of medical care, involves hundreds of millions of people getting medical care, um, and the likelihood that any president or governor is going to be able to crystallize the full range of things that need to be done in healthcare in a manner that the public will understand and support is actually pretty small. Uh, uh, you have to admire President Obama for trying, um, but we've seen the difficulty he has had in selling his program, not so much getting it through Congress, but persuading even now a majority of people in the United States that what he did and what he wanted was correct. Um, and uh, I think that's one reason that healthcare hasn't been taken on previously by many presidents or many governors, because it's just too hard to explain to people. And the political gains of solving the problem or part of the problem are probably pretty small in terms of electoral politics. So good for him for trying. It was a brave thing to do. Um, the, uh, the law that was passed will change things significantly. Uh, probably for the most part for the better, but there'll be unintended consequences that will have to be fixed. But good for him for trying. I think I've done all right as CEO of a hospital not being a doctor because I've never pretended that I was going to practice medicine. I didn't view it as my job to make clinical decisions or research decisions or teaching decisions. It was my job to try and bring people together for the greater good of the organization. Um, and I think the, uh, the doctors understood that and so felt comfortable with me in that role. It's, your question has an ironic tilt to it because it's actually harder for a doctor CEO to run an organization the way I did because they know too much about medicine and have strongly held views, views about clinical and research and teaching matters. Uh, I didn't have strongly held view, views, except that I thought we should do a really good job. But, I, but what a really good job was, was that defined by the medical staff. It wasn't defined by me. At this point, as we speak in um, just a couple months after leaving the hospital, I have no idea what I'm going to do next. Um, it's been my experience that you need time off after an intense engagement like this. This was nine years, very long days and nights. Because um, the meetings with the doctors would start early in the morning and then the meetings with the trustees and the fundraisers would go till late at night. There were many weeks um, where I did not have a meal at home, um, consecutive weeks, because that, those are just the demands of the job. It's impossible to think about what to do next when you're in the midst of that or for that matter, for several months afterwards. So we'll see. The blog, though, continues. Mm -hmm. <laughs>